Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar. And I'm here to talk to you today um, to congratulate you all on reaching 35,000 words if you've been subscribing to the channel and following the videos approximately every two weeks uh, or if you've been watching them on your own you may be that far which puts you halfway or a little past uh, in the first novel that I hope we are inspiring you to write right now. Um, keep moving forward if you need to review the videos on brainstorming or outlining please do so if you need to do a little kind of side writing just walking around in the world of your novel please feel free to do so but keep moving forward keep building word count uh, you're gonna get there you're gonna get there 35,000 words is huge but it's also I know it's that maddening point where you've done so much but there's still so much to go so keep up that energy um, the element of fiction I'm going to talk to you about today, uh, I'm actually going to talk about two of them, voice and tone, that are both related, and I think they're both related to point of view that I discussed last time. Um, and then I have a fantastic book review for you um, that may help inspire you in an interesting way. So let's get down to it. Um, when we talk about point of view. I, I went over much of that last time. I did forget to include something important, uh, whether we're dealing with a first person narrator or a third person narrator of some variety. Um, the narrator that we're listening to may not be entirely reliable. The narrator has the power to give us the world of the story as they see fit. And uh, unless the author chooses to clue us in that there's a reason to believe we are not getting the world of the story in an accurate way, we're, we're kind of on the ride with the narrator. Um, it can be very exciting, and it's not a trick I have mastered yet, to create a narrator who is not quite believable, um, who might be intentionally deceiving us. Um, so that can be fun and that gets us into talking about the voice and tone of the book. Um, of the two terms, voice tends to be the more constant. We talk about the author's voice. We talk about the voice of the story. We talk about the voice of the narrator or the voice of a character. Um, and we talk about, gosh, is that voice encouraging? Uh, is that voice hopeful? Is that voice fearful? Is that voice gruff? These are the kinds of ways we talk about authorial voice, and you can probably already hear how that's different from talking about simple point of view. Um, tone is even more slippery as a term, because we can certainly speak about the tone of the book as a whole, or we can speak about the tone of a certain passage within the book, a certain section of the text. Uh, we could talk about the tone of a scene versus the tone of the whole book. We can talk about the way the tone changes in the book. We don't often speak of uh, the author, narrator, or character's voice changing much in the course of the story, but we do tend to talk about the tone changing. Um, we use some of the same kinds of words. The tone is very upbeat, the tone is very sobering. Um, so those are some different things to keep in mind as we use uh, those terms. Another way of thinking about tone is that it is bigger than just voice or point of view. Um, we can use tone as a kind of emergent property of the work as a whole, meaning Tone isn't something that's just created by the point of view or just created by the author's voice or the characters 
or the setting. But tone is something that gets created from a combination of all those elements in the way that, you know, when you bake a cake, it's more than the sum of its ingredients. Uh, that's emergent property. And I think tone is an em can be used as an emergent property um, in that way also. All those things fit together to make the tone of the book uh, a particular way. So, that's the deal on voice and tone. Um, I am moving a little fast today. It's because I want to get to this review. It's because I've got, this is, I think there's just some really cool things here to share with you about this book. Um, the book I am sharing about today is River Solomon's The Deep. It's a novella rather than a full length novel. Um, there is an audiobook available also, and I did listen to the audio and highly recommend it. Um, the Deep is the story of Yetu, who is a sea creature born of the dead, born of pregnant slaves who were thrown overboard during the Middle Passage. Um, Yetu herself is not of that generation. Yetu is of a later generation. We get, I think the 600 years gets tossed in there. So approximately 200 years ahead of where we are, potentially 200 years ahead of where we are now in 2021. Um, and Yetu's story as the historian of her people unfolds. Um, it's a really wonderful meditation on our obligations to ourselves, our obligations to our communities, and how the two, those two things interface. So within the work itself, there's a lot of wonderful prose, there are a lot of wonderful tensions, um, it's, it's a great story, but the novella is only part of the story. And by that, I don't mean that it's the first of a series. Um, by that, I mean that it is part of something quite wonderful. And again, if you're feeling a little stuck and a little stalled at this point in your book, I hope that's not the case. Um, but if you need something to supercharge you a little bit, you may think about how things have worked out uh, for Solomon and uh, fair collaborators. Um, Solomon uses fay fair, is non-binary, uses fay fair fairs pronouns. So as you hear me using those terms, uh, that's, that, those are the appropriate pronouns for Solomon. Um, Solomon's novella is one of several Afrofuturism works that were created in response to a 1992 uh, electronica album called Deep Sea Dweller, put together by the Detroit electro duo uh, Drexia. And I'll put information about this uh, in the channel information. Drexia is D-R-E-X-I-C-I-Y-A. If you can't wait and you have to go look it up right now. So Solomon's novella comes in response to Drexia's album, but it's not the only work of art to have come in response to that album. Um, in 2017, David Diggs uh, and his band Clipping, um, which also consists of William Hudson and Jonathan Snipes, and Solomon gives uh, Diggs, Hudson, and Snipes all co-author credit on Fair Novella also. Um, in 2017, Clipping did a song called The Deep that was in response to the Deep Sea Dweller 
1992 album. Since then, Kadim Hawk and Dai Soto have also written a graphic novel called The Book of Drexia that's in response to this original 1992 album. And what I find so inspiring and energizing here is the number of different forms of art, the number of different creative approaches that are all interwoven from the same material, from the same basic concept. I love it when there's all this creative foment around something and each artist then plays off another artist who is involved in uh, that, who is involved or engaged by that particular concept uh, or that particular work of art. Um, and I find that myself very inspiring. I frequently work, have worked with visual artists in collaboration. And so this is neat to see uh, different musical artists, now uh, graphic novel as visual art, and Solomon's literary work, The Deep, all connected around this same notion of a Drexian civilization born of the dead. Um, something uh, magical and wonderful to come of the horrors of the Middle Passage. So it's, uh, I, I think if you've watched the channel much, you know I love redemption arcs. Rather than being an individual character's redemption arc, this is in its way a redemption arc, but it's also a rebellion arc. This is a whole civilization born of the dead, of the damned, um, of those literally thrown away um, by the slavers. Um, there's also some really interesting work happening, um, really interesting academic discussions happening among historians, all prompted by these particular works of art. And like I said, I'll put information about that in the uh, little description of this video on the channel. But I, I highly recommend uh, River Solomon's The Deep as a novella. And if you are curious, um, like I said, I'll, I'll put some resources in there so that you can go and explore the constellation of other things that are connected to that novella. Um, very much worth exploring. Lots of food for thought. Um, lots of, uh, if you've never, if you're not familiar with Afrofuturism, if you've never explored that particular uh, part of the galaxy that is science fiction, fantasy, paranormal, horror, um, speculative fiction stuff, Afrofuturism is pretty amazing. And this is a fantastic manifestation of it. It is typically more multimedia. Um, there is typically more crossover and more sharing um, in Afrofuturism than there are in a lot of other literary genres or movements. So um, it's pretty awesome, highly recommended. Keep writing, keep reading, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.